I'm going to show you how to make the Claremont motif. It's a square motif with a circular element in the middle and it is joined with a kind of um, mesh stitch. So I'm using a double knit cotton and a four millimeter hook, but of course you can use any thickness of yarn with a corresponding hook size. So please do have a look at my website for ideas of yarn thicknesses, hook sizes and the resulting possible resulting size of your motif. Let's start with a slip knot loop on our hook. Then we're going to chain four. And then we're going to join to form a ring in the first chain. So we're just going to join with a slip stick, <laughs> slip stitch. So go into the first chain, grab the yarn and pull it through. You should have made a little ring. Next we're going to do a chain four. This is going to represent one double crochet and a chain one space. Now we're going to put um, a double crochet into the ring and chain one. And we're going to do that another 10 times. Double crochet, chain one. Double crochet, chain one. And you'll notice that I'm catching in my tail end. Um, this helps save me sewing in later on. I will literally just trim that off because we've done a slip stitch join for the round. So um, that's not really going anywhere. Um, so we don't have to worry too much about weaving, um, sewing in to secure it. We're literally just um, crocheting over it to hide it a little bit. You don't have to do that. You can, if you like to do it a different way, that's fine. I know sometimes it's a bit too much for people to think about all in one go, especially when they're trying to learn a new pattern. So um, what we want in total is 12 double crochets with your first chain three of your chain four counting as a stitch. And we also want 12 chain one spaces. So I'm just going to double check where I'm at. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So I need one more. Chain one, double crochet into the ring. Last chain one. And I'm going to join with a slip stitch into the third chain of my beginning chain three. So this can be often be a little bit tricky to read because the first chain, um, sometimes if you're looking at it straight on, you can't really see what's going on. You might need to manoeuvre your work a little bit so you can see clearly. This is often the point where um, crochets put the slip stitch in the wrong place or through the wrong part of the stitch and it can look a bit messy. So here we've got one, two, three. And remember to always treat your chain exactly the same way as you would a normal stitch. So front loop, back loop, you've got the third part of the chain at the back. If you just go through into the space, that can um, result in a hole that's a different size to the rest because the stitch can slide around. If you only pick up one part of the chain, that can also pull and distort it. So always treat that chain as if it was a normal stitch and slip stitch join. So after round one, your work should look like this. Let's start round two. We're going to do that by slip stitching into the first chain one stay space. So don't do this too tightly because you don't want to deform the work. So quite a relaxed slip stitch in there. Next, we're gonna chain two. And this is part of the first stitch, which is a partial cluster. We're going to be doing um, three double crochet clusters. So this is the first part of this the, at the beginning. The first stitch is slightly different to the rest because we've got to start with a chain two at the beginning of the round. So chain two, and now we're going to do two partial double crochets. So yarn over, 
into the same space, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw off two. You should now have two loops on your hook. Let's make another partial double crochet, yarn over, into the space, grab the yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw off two. You should now have um, three loops on your hook, which are two partial double crochets and then a chain two. So that chain two is representing a, double, a partial double crochet. Let's yarn over and finish off all three stitches in one go. So that's our beginning three double crochet cluster. Now we're going to chain two. Now we're going to do a um, three double crochet cluster and this is just a normal one, not at the beginning of a round. So we're going to make three partial double crochets into each of these chain one spaces. So I'll do that one again, yarn over into the chain one space, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw off two, two loops on the hook. Yarn over into the space, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw off two, three loops on the hook. Yarn over into the space, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw off two, four loops on the hoop, uh, on the hook, not the hoop, yarn over and draw off all four loops in one go. And this is what your um, three double crochet cluster looks like. So it looks a little bit like a petal. And between each of those, we're doing a chain two. So we're going to carry on making these three double crochet clusters in each of these chain one spaces, dividing them with a chain two. So I'm going to carry on round now and I'll meet you back when I'm coming up back to the beginning of the row. So I'm making the last cluster stitch don't forget the last chain two space and now slip stitch into the top of the cluster stitch so what I want you to have a quick look at is let's actually pull back that chain two and go to the point where we have literally just finished this um, um, cluster stitch. So what you'll see is that the top of the stitch is this stitch here to the right of the loop and it kind of looks a bit different to the other stitches because it's sort of a bit longer and a bit elongated. That is the top of that stitch. So that's worth remembering when you're joining in the round um, because often people will mistake the top of the stitch for this first chain that you've made when the top of the stitch is actually here. So if we look at these again, because in, um, in a minute we're also going to be working into the top of these stitches so it's quite important to make sure you've identified that part of the stitch. So there's the cluster and there's the top of the stitch that relates to that cluster. There's the first chain and there's the second chain. Um, I've often seen people working into this first chain thinking it's the uh, top of the stitch and everything can end up going a bit skew with. So anyway, let's uh, we've done our last chain two and now we're going to slip stitch into the top of that first cluster stitch that we made. So at the end of round two, you should have 12 um, petals, 12 cluster stitches and 12 chain two spaces. Let's start round three. We're going to chain four. And again, this is going to count as one double crochet and a chain one space. Into the next chain two space, we're going to put one single crochet. Then we're going to chain one. And we're going to put a double crochet into the top of the cluster stitch. So if you remember, we were just talking about that. That is actually this slightly uh, baggy stitch here, as opposed to this one, which you might consider as the top of the stitch. Chain one, double crochet into the chain two space, chain one, 
double crochet into the top of the cluster stitch. So we're going to carry on around like that. Double crochet into the top of the stitch, chain one, double crochet into the chain two space. So I'm going to carry on around and I'll meet you back as I get back to the beginning. So I'm just coming up to the end of round three, put in my last double crochet, chain one, now I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain, beginning chain four. So one, two, three, and remember to treat that chain like a normal stitch and slip stitch into there. So if at this point your motif looks a bit like it's curling up like a bowl, don't worry about that. As long as you have got 24 double crochets, the chain three counting as one, and 24 chain one spaces, then that's absolutely fine. Let's start round four. Round four, it's all single crochets. So we're going to chain one. This doesn't count as any stitch, it's just helping us to get to the right height. Then in the exact same spot where you did that slip stitch join, you're going to put one single crochet. Now we're going to put two single crochets into each chain one space and one single crochet into each double crochet. Two single crochets into each chain one space, one double crochet into the top, sorry, one single crochet into the top of the double crochet. So I'm going to carry on around like that. Now the only thing you need to watch out for is sometimes once you've put in the two double crochet at the two single crochets it sort of covers up that double crochet so you might need to just sort of shunt them over to the right so I'm going to carry on around I'll meet you back in a minute coming back up to the end of the round I've put two single crochets in the last chain one space and I'm going to join with a slip stitch into the first single crochet that I made. So, at the end of this round, you should have 72 single crochets. And um, obviously, I'm not really expecting you to count those, um, but you know, you just have a quick look to see whether you've obviously missed something. Sometimes I accidentally miss out. Um, one of the double crochets working into one of the double crochets sometimes I only put one in the space if I've been distracted or you know just have a quick look and see if there's anything obvious um, that's wrong and that looks fine and as you can also see this final not the final but this last round of single crochets has really flattened out where it started to sort of curl up into a bowl Now we're ready for the last round, round five. I'm going to start off with a chain four. This is going to represent a double crochet and a chain one space. The next stitch is a treble. So we yarn over twice, we're going into that exact same spot where we slip stitched, pull up a loop, you should have four, yarn over draw off two, yarn over draw off two, yarn over draw off two you have got a nice neat long treble there. Now we're going to do the corner which is a chain two space. This first um, bit we're doing is sort of a, is a full corner. Um, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Next we're going to do another treble in the same space. I'm going to chain one and we're going to double crochet into that same space again. And this is our first corner that we have made. We've got chain three, chain four rather, with the chain three counting as a double and the chain and the other chain one counting as a corner sp as a space. Then we've got a treble, chain two, treble, chain one, double. Next up we're doing th a chain three then we're going to skip two stitches, skip one, skip two, and into that third stitch we're going to do an extended single crochet. So if you don't know what that is, 
We don't yarn over before we go into the stitch. We go into the stitch, pull up a loop. We've got the two. We're going to yarn over, but we're only going to pull that through the first loop. So in essence, we're just making a little chain there. Then we're going to yarn over and draw off both loops on the hook. And that is an extended single crochet. So what that is, it, in height, in terms of height, it's in between a single crochet and a half double. So I'm going to do another chain three. Skip two stitches into the third one, put a single crochet. I'm going to do that two more times. So chain three, skip two, single crochet, chain three, skip two, single crochet. Now you're going to chain three again and skip two and another extended single crochet. So we go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through the first loop of the hook only, i.e. make a chain. If that chain's a bit baggy, you can pull the live yarn to make that a bit neater. Yarn over, draw off two. Next, it's another chain three. Then we're going to skip two and double crochet. So I've yarned over, ready for it. One, two, into the third one, double crochet, chain one. Let's make a treble in the same space. Let's make the chain two corner. Another treble to the same space. Chain one, double into the same. Whoops, not like that though. I've messed that up, so I'm going to start it again. My yarn actually snagged, so um, so it's quite important to have a free flowing yarn. Just caught on something on the edge of the thing. Right. Next, it's another chain three. two stitches and an extended single crochet. Chain three, skip two stitches, single crochet, do that another two times, chain three, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain three, skip two, extended single crochet. So if you can um, repeat those steps all the way around, remember I've also got this written up as a pattern on my website which um, with a chart so that will also help you um, to master this pattern as well as this video just giving you a few helpful tips. So I'm just going to finish off this round and I'll meet you back at the beginning. I'm just coming up to the end of the last round. Um, I've just done a chain three and I need to skip two and do an extended single crochet. And I need to chain three and I need to finish off the round. So I'm going to slip stitch into my third chain. So here you can see one, two, three. Another way to do it, sometimes the beginning of the chain or some element of the chain can become slightly distorted. Um, you can work backwards to work out. So there's the treble. That's the top of the treble. That next chain is the chain one space which means that this next chain here is the third chain of my beginning chain three. So I've slip stitched into that. I'm going to cut my yarn um, or bite it. I've lost my scissors, so don't do this. It's not good for your teeth. 
you also get wet yarn. Anyway, I've cut the yarn and I'm going to, I've left a, a tail end um, that's long enough to sew in. I'll also show you how to do that because often times with these kind of lacy patterns, people are not really quite sure where, where they can sew their ends in. So here is our finished motif. So obviously it hasn't been blocked or anything, so this is not its it's not in its full glory, but you can get the gist of it. And I'll make sure that in this video I will post some nice blocked images of this motif. Now I'm going to show you how to join these motifs. So these motifs are joined when you crochet the final round. So because of this kind of meshy um, lacy design around the edge, it's not really possible to sew them together. So you join them together as you crochet. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to join four squares. Um, I'm going to make a block of four. Once you know how to do that, it's pretty easy to then uh, customize that to whatever kind of shape you want, whether it's a rectangle or a square or something bigger or, or making a sweater, for example. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to call this motif motif A then I'm going to put motif B here I'm going to put motif C here and then we're going to put motif D here so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make motif B all the way up to round four so that single crochet round so every single motif when you're joining it you'll always make it exactly as per the pattern up to round four. And then when it comes to round five, it's slightly different for each join, but overall the principle is the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna make the next motif up to round four and I'll see you in a minute. So I've made the motif B um, and I've done it up to round four. And now I'm ready to do the final round of this motif and join it onto here. So the first thing you need to take into consideration is how many um, sides and corners are you joining. So in this case, I'm joining two sides, uh, sorry, one side and two corners. Those are the points where I'm going to be joining. So once it's not so important when you're doing um, just a couple of motifs like this, but as you progress and if you're making a blanket or um, a jumper or something and the fabric gets bigger and bigger the more pieces you add um, you'll start to realize that there is a benefit um, in doing as much of the border as you can up to the point where you need to join it so because this as we've just discussed I'm only joining along one side and two corners I'm going to make as much of this border as I can before I need to join. So I'm going to do two corners um, and another side and then just before I come to the third corner that's where I'm going to stop and join it onto here. The other thing to bear in mind is the direction in which you're crocheting. Um, so obviously we're always working um, clockwise so that will also determine how you're going to work out where you're going to join because as you make more complex shapes um, you'll have to really think about how and when you're joining the pieces together. So this exercise of just putting four together in a square, it, um, it will familiarize you with the kind of thought processes that are quite difficult to put down into words or even describe really when you're trying to reason how to join these together. Anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna make Three, uh, two corners and two sides and I'll meet you back in a minute when I'm ready to do the first join. So here you can see um, I've done the first corner, the first side, the second corner, the second side. Um, I've done the chain three, uh, the last chain three of that second side because now I'm going to be making the next corner which I'm going to be joining onto this motif at this point here. So let's go into making the corner. 
So I did a chain three. Remember, I've got to skip two, and then I'm going to double crochet. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to treble. And here's where you've got to think about the symmetry when you're joining. So our um, corner is a chain two corner. Um, so I'm going to, I want to join in the middle of that. So I'm going to, I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to use a slip stitch join. So I'm going to go into the chain two space at the corner where I want to join. I'm going to go from the top down. So from the right side of the fabric, I'm going to go down into that space. And then I'm just going to grab the yarn and pull up a loop. And that is just a slip stitch. And now I want to make the rest of that chain, so I'm going to um, chain one. So technically, if you really want to um, break this down, we have actually made three stitches there rather than two. Um, but this slip stitch join, this first slip stitch join you do when you're joining items together, that actually becomes kind of um, the pivotal point where all the other slip stitches go. So. It doesn't really count as a stitch, it counts as just like a like the, the point where you're always going to be joining. So next up we're going to finish this corner with another treble. And this is where you need to just keep a little bit more control of the yarn because once you start joining this live loop from this last, uh, the next treble can open right up and make the work look a bit messy as this becomes heavier and weighs, weighs on the hook. So there's a couple of ways that you can manage that. When I yarn over, I like to um, push all the yarn overs close together and try and control them with my index finger of the other hand. Um, another thing I like to do is really increase the tension, so the counter tension on the left hand. So you are actually putting a bit more oppositional direction on this live yarn just to stop everything moving around because you really want to keep that nice and neat. Um, you will notice um, that if you get a bit more relaxed and you this stitch and you work this stitch as you normally would, that it becomes a bit sloppy looking. So you do have to kind of be a bit mindful about that unless you're lucky enough to have perfect tension and just adjust things naturally without even thinking about it but most of us are not like that so <laughs> so I've just done that um, so after that treble remember you do a chain one and a double crochet so the next up would be a chain three um, but because we're joining we need to join midway in that chain three because we want to join that chain three to the chain, the adjacent chain three on this other motif. So what we're going to do is chain one, and then again we're going to do a slip stitch join. So always go from the top of the work down through to the wrong side, and then pull up a loop. So we've done a, a slip stitch join there, and then we do which counts as the second chain, and then the chain one counts as the third chain, and then we follow the pattern as normal skip two stitches and do an extended single crochet into the third stitch. So again, if we were following the pattern normally without joining, we would be doing a chain three, but because this is a join, we chain one, we find the next adjacent chain three space, go into there, pull up a loop, which is slip stitch, counts as a chain, and then we make one more chain, and then we continue in the pattern skip two stitches, single crochet, chain one, go into the adjacent chain three space, slip stitch, chain one, skip two, single crochet, chain one, slip stitch into the adjacent chain three space of the next motif, chain one, do our third single crochet, so we've got an extended single crochet, and then one, two, three single crochets, chain one, go into the next chain three space on the adjacent motif, slip stitch, chain one, this next one is going to be a extended single crochet, one, two, into the third one, 
extended single crochet, chain one, into the last chain three space, slip stitch, chain one. Now we come to make another corner join. So skip two into the third double crochet, chain one, treble crochet. And normally we would do a chain two here, but we're going to chain one. We're going to go into the chain two space of the adjacent motif. Slip stitch, chain one, and then continue the corner in the same space, treble crochet. Keeping good control of that stitch. Chain one, double crochet in the same space. So, there you can see my join. I've joined two corners and all along this side. And I've kept this, kept, although we've done a join, we're still mimicking the pattern um, of the motif on the other side with the uh, slip stitches placed in the middle where we would have put the second chain of these chain three mesh sections. So let's finish off this edge, and that's nice and easy, because by now you should be pretty familiar with the pattern. Chain three, skip two, extended single crochet, chain three, skip two. You know what to do, and I'll meet you at the end of this round. So I've done the last chain three, and I'm now going to slip stitch into the third chain of my beginning chain four. Cut the yarn, yarn over, pull that tail end through the live loop to fasten off. So here you have it, you've got motif A to which I have joined motif B. I've made the next motif up to round four and again um, I'm putting it up here so um, I need to decide how much of the motif I need to make how much of the final motif round I need to make before I can start joining. So remember we're working clockwise, so I'm going to do one corner, two corner, one corner, one side, one corner, one side, and then when I come to make the third corner, that's the point where I'm going to stop and join it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do um, the first two corners and sides and then I'll come back to you. So I'm just coming up to the third corner. So I'm going to do the first part of the corner. Uh, skip two stitches, double crochet, chain one, treble and then chain one um, and now I'm going to join onto this piece here. So just to make it a bit easier, I'm actually gonna spin that round. Um, I'm gonna show you how to join. So here is, you need to find the slip stitch join of the previous round. So sometimes you might need to sort of move that with your fingernails. And you can see the top of it looks like a chain and then you've got the legs of the slip stitch going round this uh, chain two corner. So the way you want to join is through these legs, through the middle of the legs of the slip stitch. And you always want to do that from right to left. So you're picking up the legs. So if you look at how, the, how this work where we're joining it is, that's the join along the mesh and that's the join in the corner and where this is a slip stitch we found the legs and we're going through that slip stitch from right to left. Let's get control of this live loop again and then we're going to slip stitch into there. Chain one and now finish off this corner. So treble, making sure you keep Good control of the stitch, chain one, double, 
and now just double check where you're joining this is why um, if you're doing this for the first time you're unfamiliar with join as you go I always recommend doing it on a flat surface so you can actually see what's going on and now we're going into this side which is as you know is a series of chain threes and uh, extended single crochets and normal single crochets uh, and we're going to join midpoint of each of these chain sections so I'm just going to chain one I'm going to find the corresponding chain three space on this side I'm going to slip stitch chain one skip two on the motif I'm working on extended single crochet chain one join with a slip stitch to the motif I'm joining to skip two single crochet chain one slip stitch join chain one skip two single crochet chain one into the next chain three space chain one skip two single crochet chain one into the next chain three space of the adjacent motif chain one skip two extended single crochet chain one join with a slip stitch chain one one two oh and now we're ready for the next corner so skip two double crochet chain one treble chain one into that corner space slip stitch join chain one treble chain one double chain three extended single skip two normal single Quit. chain three skip two normal single Final chain three and one, two, three, join in the third chain. Okay, Let's have a look. It doesn't fit in full shot, but hopefully, you can see that well enough. So, we've got motif A, motif B. Motif C. Now we're going to do motif D. And again, let's go up to round four and I'll meet you back when I've done that. So I've done up to round four of motif D, and this one I'm going to fit in this space here. So the difference with this one and the ones we've just done is that we're joining at three corners and we're joining at two sides. So these ones we've only joined two corners and one side, this one two sides, three corners and also this middle corner join is a, there's already three motifs joined together there so we will, um, I'll show you how to join there to make it look nice and neat. So in this instance, we're, because we're working clockwise, we're going to start with this corner up here and then we're only going to do one side and then as soon as we um, fin um, start the second corner we're going to have to think about joining. So I'm going to go ahead and do the first corner and first side. So I'm ready to start this next corner with a double crochet, chain one, treble, chain one, and I need to join in this corner. And remember, again, always work by inserting the hook down from the top of the motif down to the wrong side. Pull up a loop to make a slip stitch, chain one, treble back into that same spot, 
making sure you keep good control, chain one, double, and then we're going to join this side in the same way as we've done the other sides. Let's move those tail ends out of the way. I'll show you how to sew those in as well. Skip two single crochet. Extended single, chain one into the next, join to the next chain three space. And now we're making the next corner, skip two, double crochet, chain one, treble. A chain one. And I need to have a look at this um, slip stitch join that we've made. Um, so if you remember, we've done a slip stitch join. Joined the first motif to the second with a slip stitch join and then we worked into that slip stitch join with the third motif. So what you'll notice is that where you've joined that third motif, the legs of the slip stitch have turned into kind of a little ring so that's where you want to go you want to go in that ring which is the legs of the slip stitch that we opened up by putting another slip stitch in there so that's where you want to slip stitch into there slip stitch into there chain one treble chain one double let's have a quick look so then there you can see that makes a really nice neat join so and that's the formula you'll follow every time you join if there's already a join you always work into the slip stitch join going from right to left through the legs of the join and then every subsequent join in the same spot you always work into the little ring that has then been formed um, by working into those slip stitch and that just always makes a very neat and consistent um, point in your work. So let's carry on with this side join which you're now probably very familiar with so I don't need to tell you what to do. I'm just going to go ahead and finish joining this motif and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. So here are our four motifs joined together. I'm now going to show you how to um, sew in these ends. So as a general rule of thumb, any end that's right on an edge, I won't sew that in until I've put the final border on. So these ends this end here and this end here I won't sew in because um, I find it's quite tricky um, you can end up looking a bit messy if you then try and add a border on later and you've already sewn the end in that's just my personal preference and actually it really depends on the motif as well um, it might actually be alright for this particular motif because as I said because the edge is the last round is a mesh you know, might not be working any stitches into that anyway. So I'm going to use this um, needle with a large eye, a wool needle, to sew in these ends. So when you're sewing in an end, obviously with this it's been finished with a slip stitch join. So this is a pretty secure ending unless you actually cut it really close um, then it could come undone but with this end we're just hiding it we're not securing anything um, because it already is p particularly secure with a slip stitch um, ending if you've done a sewn bind off then you 
would need to consider um, that the sewing in element is actually a method of securing the stitch. So I've threaded my needle into there and what I'm going to do is because this is quite open and meshy um, I need to find somewhere where I can secure it where it's not going to pop out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to that chain, the starting chain of that round where I've also ended the round I'm actually going to sew, do like a little mini running stitch through there. I'll show you again in another one. A little running stitch through that chain from the back of the work. Just make sure it matches gauge by pulling it because you don't want to pucker it up. Check what it looks like on the other side, looks fine. And now I'm going to go into this little congested area where the corner stitches are. I'm going to go into there. And again, make sure you're not pulling that tight when you're pulling it through. And now I'm going to catch a leg or skip a leg of this cluster and go back into that congested area. And then trim the yarn. Being careful not to cut the motif, obviously. So there you can see that that is pretty much hidden now. Um, and also what I like about weaving through the starting chain is that often these starting chains can be a little bit skinny, like here. They can be a bit skinny compared to the other stitches. So by weaving that tail end back through the starting chain, you kind of um, thicken up that stitch a bit and make it more consistent with the rest of the crochet. So here's another end, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to get thread my large eyed needle and then I'm going to just weave in and out of this chain. Don't have to be too um, neat as long as you're catching some of the stitches and as long as it looks okay from the other side and as long as you're matching the gauge so it's natural natural to when you've pulled that it will shorten that stitch just stretch it out check what it looks like on the other side looks fine go into this clustered area catch a leg and come back on yourself and then trim off that end. I'm going to um, do the other ends. I'm going to wash and block this and I'm going to show you what it looks like once it's been nicely washed and blocked. <laughs> 